and Innovation. We're here in Wellington today for the final session I'm going to be hosting today and I'm incredibly honoured to be joined uh, by Jessica and Anton from Mixed and From Beyond uh, and also here with Laureen from Here Tohu. Uh, we've got some fascinating discussions we're going to have today around virtual reality and the future of this very exciting industry and you know really talking today about innovation that's good for the world and it's a bit of a Wellin Wellington showcase on some of the amazing innovation coming out of Wellington. So to kick this off, guys, firstly, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, it's great to be here with you, and uh, I'm really excited to learn more about your exciting company. So we've got a presentation that Jessica and Anton are going to take us through uh, to start with, and then we're going to go into some questions after that. So I'll hand over to you guys, Jessica and Anton, to start taking us through the, the presentation. Thank you again. Cool. Kia ora. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, all right. Well, we might as well just kick it off with, um, with who we are. And as you can see, there's two brands here, Anton and myself. Um, have been running Mix for a few years now, which is a virtual and augmented reality services company. And then we have an exciting new company and project, which we will kind of um, delve into a little bit at the end of this presentation. So again, just something that is also about what's good for the world. So um, I'll take you through. Um, so I think one of the exciting things about virtual reality that really um, hasn't been exposed as much as some of the opportunities that it has to capture some of um, the most important historical documents and places within the world. Mm -hmm. And we're very lucky that we've been able to work here with um, Lorraine and uh, the DIA and the He Tohu team uh, to capture mm -hmm. He Tohu, the full exhibition, in virtual reality. Um, and. Um, maybe it might actually be valuable okay. if, for you cool. just to talk a little bit about yeah. the, if that's all right, if, um, the problem and that we were trying to solve and why virtual reality was a really great solution. And then we can cool. show everyone a little bit of a video about what we've actually created. And Anton yeah. can speak a bit about some of the work that we've done in terms of the photogrammetry. Cool. Okay, kia ora. Um, I'm the manager of the Here Tohu exhibition, which is based in the National Library in Wellington. Um, and this picture that you can see is our wakahuia that houses our three um, iconic constitutional documents. So there's He Whakapultanga, there's the Te Tūriti of Waitangi and also the women's suffrage petition uh, hidden in this room. Um, people, oh here we go, so in Wellington people can come and see these documents and learn a lot about them but people who don't live in Wellington or live somewhere else in the world don't have access to them. They can't be moved around the country, they're very fragile and this room has been built especially um, to house them, has the right temperature, lighting controls, uh, everything you need to keep them with us for a number of years to come. So um, the problem to solve was how do we share this with the rest of New Zealand and we that's when we went to Mixed and worked with them to design a virtual reality experience that we could take around. And should we Very cool. give everyone a little glimpse cool. of, of this experience? So this is um, shot within the VR experience. I had a headset on, we're filming it. Yep. <laughs> Scream grab straight out of the experience. land and for those who visit to experience the spirit of three documents that continue to shape Aotearoa, New Zealand. This sacred space within Te Ahumairangi is fashioned with symbols of our natural and human environment and of times past and present. It gives place to a lineage of blood and stories of our ancestry and of dreams for the future. We explore our past in order to fulfill the greenstone promise of enduring peace. of the treaty documents was signed by 240 chiefs from Northern and Hauraki tribes. The young Matarahurahu chief Honeheke was the first to sign. Later, some of his elders wrote their own names above his, no doubt to indicate their highest status. 
there was an indifferent attitude to the storage of this living document until restoration began in 1913. The cluttered and untidy parchment, damaged by history and hungry rodents, remains a powerful symbol of mystery and hope. A little glimpse of um, the He Tohu virtual reality experience that um, our team at Mix created, collaboration with the DIA. And uh, I guess it's just a really fantastic example of how we can use this medium to capture something that's so special, to be able to mm. take it out to wider audiences beyond those who are able to get to Wellington, who are able to come to the experience. Uh, it's pretty special and uh, no damage, no, nothing was damaged in the process of making it. So, you know, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's, good yeah. it's good for the world. <laughs> yeah, so that's, um, I'm sure we'll delve into some questions about it later, but yes. that's just one of our projects that we're really proud of um, and that I think fits in nicely with the theme. And then um, something else that we've worked on over the past few years, um, which I wanted to talk to you about uh, is, I guess, something which is really close to my heart and I think many in, in Aotearoa because it's a huge issue and that is uh, well-being and mental health. We have, um, you know, huge, huge issues here in, in New Zealand and across the world and one in four uh, adults will suffer from some type of mental illness within their life. Um, and if but probably about two years ago, I think it was, um, maybe a little bit prior to that, uh, an AR app came out called Pokemon Go. Now, if you haven't heard of Pokemon Go, I don't know where you've been because <laughs> <laughs> this, this really launched augmented reality into the mainstream. Mm. This was the moment that everyone went, ah, oh, we get what this is. Okay, a cool digital object is now overlaid into our real environment and we can interact with it. And in the case of this game, it was, you know, fun little characters. And of course we, you know, saw, um, you know, teenagers and all sorts of different people gathering at Oriental Beach with their phones in front of their faces. And we went, what are they all doing? And of course they were playing Pokemon Go. But for me at the time, uh, I was working uh, with a team on a wellbeing app just a regular app, it was all about tracking your mood and your goals and how can you connect them with your network when you're not feeling so good. Uh, and I went to see the CEO and I said, have you seen this Pokemon Go AR app? Like this, this could be something that we need to work on and integrate into what we're doing because it's answering so many of the questions or so many of the, you know, it's solving so many of the problems that we see in terms of well-being and mental health. It's getting people outside. You know, it's getting them connecting with their friends. It's getting them exercising. There's just so many things that um, we know are important for our well-being that this game, <laughs> you know, was actually mm. enabling people to do. And I wasn't the only person thinking this because uh, there's some stats out there in terms of, you know, people who were actually using this game and what it was doing for them in terms of their anxiety, in terms of depression. There's some really positive results in there. Um, and so I guess that was the first time that I realised that, uh, you know, a technology could be solving like this, which often people can think is gimmicky, could be actually solving some really big issues, some social issues for our world, and it was really exciting. Um, and then it wasn't long after that, uh, I was working in VRs, working with Mixed, um, I'd set up a centre, you know, kind of my whole world was <laughs> VR and AR, and I was lucky to come across um, the team at the Breast Cancer Foundation, um, and Adele and the team were really trying to look at how technology, again, could be used um, to solve some of the problems that their patients were having and particularly people with metastatic breast cancer, where you are actually at the end of your life, there isn't much um, available in terms of counselling and support, you're really at home and you're suffering from pain, anxiety, fear, depression, it's not a nice place to be, and trying to find some ways that they could make that a better place, but also using New Zealand technology, um, something that was maybe effective in terms of usability, um, and so we embarked on a collaborative project with some really great people, uh, Park Road Post, um, Victoria University, some independent VR, AR um, 
kind of makers of mm -hmm. great content, creators, and we looked at a whole lot of research, uh, particularly around Hunter Hoffman, done a lot of work with burn victims using VR um, when they were having their bandages changed, and he was able to get some really positive results uh, in terms of creating, you know, the snow world that they had put the headset on and they're playing and, they're, you know, there's snowballs and at the same time they were having their burns changed and instead of having morphine, they had the VR experience mm. and they mm. had, um, the results were extremely positive. Mm. In fact, 50% less pain was felt during um, the VR experience than wow. the morphine was doing. Mm. Now this is like 25 years ago, so this is well, not new yeah. Yeah, yeah. research, uh, but it was all hospital based. It was all with really um, expensive equipment. And so what we wanted to do was take a lot of this research and then say, well, how can we make something really accessible, can be an at home um, therapy, using some of the new wireless headsets uh, was simple to use and yeah we, we basically took all of this research around interactivity within a VR experience mm. um, and how that can really help you, um, it, you know the distraction, it's amazing you know how our mind can mm. actually, uh, how our mind works and that we can be distracted and feel less pain. Mm. Um, and not just immediately, for up to, like the results from uh, Hunter Hoffman were up to 24 hours post the mm. experience. They wow. weren't just instant and then the pain was back. Uh, and then also a lot of research with, you know, with the woman with breast cancer, what are they like? You know, and we created a, a bunch of uh, different experiences for them to trial. Uh, we've had our first trial, it's been really successful. Now we're trying to go into clinical trials. That's quite a hard process, so quite a bit of work to do. Um, but it's just, a, again, uh, an example where I feel like we're really lucky that we can use this technology and people are forward thinking and how it's applied um, in a way to, to help. And I think there's actually some really great global examples now yeah. in mm. terms of well-being and health. Um, and so I guess for us, you know, we're, we've worked with a number of clients and, you know, generally the thing we say is identify your problem. What is it? You know, what is it you're trying to achieve? What is that issue? Um, be creative. You know, we don't try and force the technology to fit though. Maybe VR and AR isn't right. It definitely often isn't. Um, so don't ever force it and, you know, uh, and then really encourage New Zealand to find startups, you know, be brave and do a pilot and see if it works out. Mm. And then hopefully, you know, you have some good success and you'll be able to continue it. Absolutely. It's um, so exciting. Yeah. So they're kind of the key things, I guess, we've really learned from our time mm. at Mixed and what we're really passionate about in terms of our services work. Mm. And then we've been lucky uh, uh, kind of last year to start a new company with our co-founder, Tim Rastel. And again, this is really about how do we use and leverage this technology to do things that make us feel good and, uh, and healthy. And so we have created social VR gaming uh, games and spaces where you can have a whole lot of fun mm -hmm. together with your friends in a really healthy um, uh, family friendly environment. So that's kind of our, our next stage of what we're working on and you know there'll be more of this to come soon. We're, we're still working pretty hard yeah. in our lab. So the, <laughs> the idea is with Beyond that you would essentially be uh, building you know the next Pokemon Go or, or, or you know games like that? Yeah it's more about um, VR okay. so all immersive and location based entertainment so spaces okay. that you can go to so you think like laser tag yes. meets virtual reality Yes. but really family friendly fun content okay. that makes you laugh and makes you come back. That's so exciting yeah. and, and just for the viewers that might not be familiar can you just explain the difference between AR and VR? Do you want to talk? Because I've been talking yeah. so much. <laughs> I'm sick of my voice. <laughs> so in a nutshell, I mean, VR yeah. is, a, is, is an experience where you can put on a headset and you're totally immersed in a new yep. reality, a virtual reality. Yeah. Um, augmented reality brings elements and puts them into the world around you. So it can be anything and right. anywhere. Right. Um, but it is that's, that's the two distinctions really, is that virtual reality totally immerses you into somewhere else and augmented reality places content in the environment around you. Yeah, and Anton, how did you first get into this world? Um, well, it was, it was quite a similar similar story to Jessica earlier, is that we, I've been building software and applications for quite a few years. Yep. Um, we saw Pokemon Go sort of really take off and, and, and do its thing. 
um, and thought, hey, this is an awesome opportunity and this is sort of the new frontier of media and of entertainment and um, we just jumped in feet first. Yeah. And it's so and exciting. Here we are. And I think what's so powerful is obviously from a gaming perspective and from a fun perspective, uh, there's so many opportunities for, for this, but also, you know, from a really, um, you know, a, a perspective of like how can we help make the world a better place as well and how can we really help, uh, you know, things like the medical applications you talk about and the and the historical applications mm -hmm. as well. So um, what what is the, the greatest hope that, that you both have for the, for the impact you would like this company to have on the world in 10 years from now? Well, I can talk about beyond. I think for beyond, we want to, we just want to make fun experiences for people, yeah. um, and just to really encourage fun and play, and just to get people out there with smiles on their faces, yeah. and um, really be on that new frontier of entertainment. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess it's about creating a healthier and happier world, yeah. no matter what it is that you're doing, yes. uh, and that's our our vision and our mission with both of our, our companies. Yeah, uh, happier and healthier. Yeah, yeah, that's so cool. And Lorraine, I, I mean the the importance of these documents is obviously is obviously huge. And congratulations for having the um, the you know the technological initiative to go through a process like this because it seems incredibly sort of innovative. How did you, you know, first get exposed to this world yourself and get passionate about it and, and what have been the sort of, um, you know, success stories you've seen of people from all over the world experiencing this? Okay, cool. Um, I do have a background in AV and IT technology but yeah. not in VR so I was really interested when yeah. I um, heard that this could be a good option for us. Yeah. So, um, our, our exhibition was designed in consultation with Māori and mana whenua, so okay. it was really important that what we ever, whatever we designed in the VR sense yes. was, um, you know, had this, the same components, I guess, or the same yeah. um, partnership that we'd had when we created the exhibition. Yeah. So um, for the VR, Mix were able to bring in quite specialist um, people, so yeah. a well-recognised Māori writer okay. writing the script for us. Um, the young Māori presenter that you saw on yep. the um, video, um, he was just perfect. And, and also the feedback that came from the demo day yesterday for Tech Week yep. was they really liked the presenter, liked the way he conveyed the message, so those yep. things were really important for us. Absolutely. And then respecting the um, documents um, and so how the photogrammetry was done, that was really important to us and again mixed with yep. um, really on board with that. Wow. So, yeah, and yeah. how long has it been live for now, the experience? Um, we, when did we go live? January, I think? Okay, yeah, January, yeah, oh Yeah, wow. yeah, okay. but our app's not out yet, so we've only had a few opportunities to yes. actually trial it. Yeah, yeah, mm. and, and you guys both talk about the um, opportunity in so many different fields for this technology to be applied. Where, where do you all think that the, the, the greatest opportunities or lowest hanging fruit are today in industry for people watching this to either um, you know, start and scale valuable companies or for the larger companies watching this that could apply it to their industries? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of opportunities yeah. in enterprise solutions. Yeah, yeah. And we were at a conference last year, and I think we probably saw about thirty different eyewear, mm. you know, companies. Mm. And the, and the future is that these will be augmented, yeah. and uh, it's a crazy thing to think about. But we won't have screens in the future. We will actually be dialing up and calling, and yeah. st all of that will be here in front of us rather than our phone. And of course, we could. It was hard to imagine the phone when it didn't exist either, yeah. the mobile mm. phone. So yeah. you know, it is a hard thing to imagine. We're still a while away from that. But there are lots of opportunities uh, in that enterprise kind of space mm. if mm. people are wanting to get into it. In terms of entertainment and gaming, that's still really where we are sitting right now in terms of, uh, you know, the, the market. You know, it hasn't had the consumer uptake yet that you need to be able to um, apply all across all sectors. You know, if you're going for consumers, mm. then... Is that just because people need the goggles and you've the You've got to have the headset. Yeah, you've got to have yeah, the equipment. Yeah. And yeah. What, you know? is, what does a good one cost? Because obviously you can get cheap ones, but if, are you looking at, you know, $1,000 for a good one? Well, yeah, at least $1,000, okay. and then you're just looking at another couple of thousand dollars for a computer to run it. Right. Um, mm. There are a lot of new options coming out. There's, um, there's an Oculus Quest that's actually releasing this week, yeah. um, which is an all-in-one headset and doesn't require a computer. 
Um, and those kind of headsets are really going to are going to drive um, the, the more retail and the more consumer focused VR experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was talking um, to a, a gentleman earlier today. I was talking about like the future. You know, you we talk about glasses, but um, apparently this technology and people researching like even contact lenses, right? So yeah. you wouldn't even have to yep. wear glasses. Yeah, I can just mm. wouldn't even need this. I can look smart on every subject <laughs> and just ask, ask <laughs> lots of interesting it. questions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's pretty fascinating where this technology yeah. could yeah. go. Yeah, and the yeah. big guys are putting a lot of investment and time into this. You know, yeah. the Oculus Quest that Anton mentions is Facebook. That's yes. who's putting that out. You know, spaces. They have a VR social um, space that you can hang out with people instead of, you know, having a call or yeah. a message. And it's actually kind of cool. I thought it was going to be goofy and then I tried it and I was like, it's actually quite fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And out of the countries, uh, sorry, the companies, I should say, the big tech companies, the Facebooks, the Googles, the Microsofts, the Amazons, who's winning the race? Ooh, and and My VR, probably. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's a hard question. Probably, probably it's your Oculus um, okay. at the moment. Um, and when it comes to AR, I'd say Microsoft. Um, yes. Of course, we've got Magic Leap, who, are, who yep. have a team out, out in Wellington here. Um, Doing awesome stuff. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> then we have Apple, who are, who are going to be releasing um, AR glasses soon. And I mean, once yeah. Apple release oh. something, um, that's when you really get consumer uptake. That's going to be so cool. So that's yeah. rumoured to be coming out at the end of the year. So we'll, mm. we'll see, see yeah. how that goes. And I mean, once they do it, um, I'll be bundling them with every iPhone, so yep. everyone will be wearing them on there. Yeah, I <laughs> saw that my um, the company that of my drone, um, DJI, released a headset recently <laughs> for the drone, and uh, I decided not to buy it, and then I crashed it into the building two days later. So <laughs> I wish I'd had the headset on uh, when I uh, when I looked at it. Um, and and what would you, what support have you made use of as a company in terms of the ecosystem here in New Zealand? You know, whether it be government funding, accelerators, incubators, mentors. I'd love to learn a bit more about the journey of where you've, how you've got to where you are today. Yeah, well, I helped start a co-working space and we were in that space. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, you know, definitely see co-working and having been involved in the Biz Dojo prior to that yeah. um, as a really important, um, vital part of the startup ecosystem and the support that you get from other people within that space is really key. Yeah. Um, I think for us, uh, in terms of beyond, uh, we've been working with Alison at Reader um, yeah. and you know, um, working on the R&D grants with Callahan Innovation, and that has uh, been really important yeah. and is uh, a big one, I think, because there's actually not a lot yeah. of funding and opportunities mm. when you're in the early stages. Yeah. Mixed, we worked hard, we worked really hard. We didn't pay ourselves for a very, very long time. <laughs> yes. You yeah. know, it's hard, and it's hard yeah. when you're, you know, yeah. kind of my age, our age, you yeah. know, you're not, yeah. you have a mortgage and kids, and yeah. it's, it's not as easy when, you know, you're exactly. young, so yeah. there could be more, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a yeah. lot more. <laughs> yeah, what's the one thing the government should do to make, uh, make it easier for these kind of businesses to start and scale from New Zealand? You can, everyone's, everyone have a, is well, welcome to have a crack. Personally, I think they, there needs to be more grants available for young tech startup companies. Um, yeah. And tax breaks. And tax breaks. Yeah. We'll tax all breaks, the same tax. please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think. I reckon we, what about just no tax for anyone that starts yep. a business ever yeah. again? Just ever <laughs> again. <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, yeah. if you're brave and you're bold and you're taking huge risks yeah. and you're growing the economy, so, yeah. you know. Yeah. No, no, I appreciate it. And, and, um, I guess just finally, you know, I'd love to know more about, um, you know, obviously the, the project we hear about today is hugely exciting What and the, the other medical project as well. Is there a, any other projects you'd like to talk about that have been sort of ones that you've been working on that you think um, are great applications of this technology? Yeah, I guess probably the only one that comes to mind was with Te Puna Kokiri. Uh, in the last general elections, yeah. we brought William Wairoa, who's a bit of an Instagram star, uh, into life in augmented reality and... Um, and it was really around getting young Māori people to vote and that okay. had an increase in voters in that target market which was a really positive outcome of something which you could consider a mm. bit gimmicky using AR in that way but it actually mm. had a really positive um, result. Absolutely and I read that you enjoy vomit inducing roller coasters. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah whenever we travel we always go to the theme park. <laughs> What's your favourite theme park? Oh um, Six Flags probably. <laughs> yes I was gonna say yeah I'm going to Six, Six Flags is my favourite as well. Yeah. What's your favourite ride? Oh, with this, all of the roller coasters. Yeah. I've done them all. Yeah. You know that one, Tatsu, that goes like upside down oh, backwards yes, when yes. you're on? That's scary, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's very fun. <laughs> anyway, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time, Anton, Jessica, Lorraine. Yeah, really, cool. really appreciate cool. it.
and um, it's some very inspiring work that you're all you're all working on. And um, you know, I think I can't wait to put the get some goggles and go through the, the yes. museum. It's super yep. exciting, and I think um, you know these documents are obviously critical to obviously th the place we live in today. And it's yep. so important that the history of those don't get lost as, as the, the future generations. So thank you so much to the viewers as well for tuning in. Today's my this is my last session for the day. So I really appreciate you tuning in throughout the day. We've had thousands of people from all over the country and uh, all over the world as well tuning in to these sessions. So thank you so much to all of the crew behind the scenes who have done a great job bringing this to life, uh, to Callahan Innovation for hosting us, uh, to Ali and her team for tech, from Tech Week for facilitating everything. And we look forward to seeing you um, again tomorrow in Christchurch. I believe Sean's going to be back for another couple of sessions this afternoon. But see you tomorrow morning in Christchurch. Thank you so much. Thank you.